Okay, so I've recently gotten into doing some planetary photography, and so I kind of wanted to run through the setup and the process that I'm currently using in order to do that. Um, again, I am using a Celestron C6 with a Canon SL2. Um, usually I put a Barlow or two in front of it to kind of boost the magnification some from just the native resolution. Um, so something maybe like a 2x Barlow, so maybe you're doing it like a 3000 a millimeter focal length instead of the native 1500 but uh, generally speaking um, that's the overall setup i'm using this on a manual alt as mount it's actually the uh, explorer scientific twilight one mount so i have to manually track the planets as i do the video but that's kind of the magic of using the software afterwards is that you can basically use a manual mount like this manually track it you can have it you know get jiggly move off frame um, but you can easily eliminate all that um, you know, all those bad segments uh, when you compile a, a set of video frames together uh, to, to produce a fairly nice composite image. And you can see here, again, the sample of the raw video, and then see here what the final result can look like, uh, you know, using, uh, again, sort of just a very basic setup. And again, a Canon SL2 is not the ideal camera for doing planetary photography. Uh, there are You can get dedicated cameras that are much better, and certainly uh, a six-inch aperture is kind of fairly limited. Uh, as well, and obviously a manual alt as mount adds further complications with, uh, you know, not, ha not having as much stability and, and that kind of thing as well. So um, again, not the ideal setup. This is basically what I have to use at the moment. And so I wanted to kind of run through the overall process of how I handle this video. So the video coming out of the camera is an MP4 format. And so you do need to do some conversions in, in order to actually process it in some additional software. And so, so the first step in the process is to use PIP. I'll open that up here on the screen. And, uh, and what PIP does is it helps to convert the MP4 video to an AVI format, which is easier to use down the road. Uh, and so uh, basically this is actually running on a 12 inch MacBook, but it's all Windows software that I'm using. So if you're using a Windows computer, you can download the software and run it natively. Um, I'm using PIP, AutoStacker, and Registax. Um, all, of them are, all of these are available for free. Um, and so it's fairly straightforward to get going and doing some planetary photography. And I'm running all of these in a uh, wine bottler, which is so, sort of an emulator to run them on a MacBook. So, and again, it's a 12-inch MacBook, so not the highest powered computer by any means, um, but it, it does a fairly decent job handling uh, this data. So we'll go ahead and start here. Okay, so the basic settings you need to use with PIP are to make sure you select Optimize Options for Planetary. Um, and that will pretty much get you where you want uh, for most things. We'll go ahead and go to Processing Options. Um, uh, let's see, again, make sure it's Object Planetary. Um, you can do this cropping, which is really helpful for reducing the amount of data. So we'll do Test Options and see what that looks like. And, and so here in this window down here, you can see now that uh, this is basically the data you're going to get. It's going to crop out all the extra uh, blank space around Saturn, um, and it'll give you sort of a smaller a smaller uh, chunk of the video to work with for further processing, which will speed things up dramatically when we're doing the stacking and everything else. We have a smaller set of data. Um, and you can see here, this initial frame was quite bad, but uh, it does put it right in the middle. And that's one of the other nice features is that it will not only do the, the video conversion to AVI, but it, would also, it will also center the planet and it will crop the data, which uh, is quite helpful. So once we do that, we'll just go to do processing and we'll do start. And it's going to go through 2,911 frames. And uh, it does take a couple minutes here to go through all that. Uh, again, this is a 12-inch MacBook running Windows software in an emulator, so it is not uh, the fastest solution. But uh, it's not hugely, uh, hugely long. Um, again, it takes a couple minutes, and uh, it'll get through this, this uh, initial step. So now this is done, so we can go ahead and close out PIP. And now we'll jump to Auto Stackert. And we'll go ahead and open up the file that we produced, if we can find it. And so it should be in this raw video. Here's this pip folder that I just generated. And there is now the same uh, file that we had before, but now it's an AVI file format. And again, it's a cropped, uh, a cropped video. So we'll pull that into Auto Stackert. We'll run the Analyze here. And now what it does is it produces a nice graph that basically has the data uh, sort of sorted between best and worst frames. And so now it's, uh, and remember initially that initial frame was quite bad. Now it has one of the better frames here at the start on this uh, side panel. And so you can scroll through all the frames in order of best to worst and kind of decide where you want to sort of draw the cutoff line. 
And with these files, typically I do about 70%. Again, if, if I had tracking, I could probably go to like 80%. Um, if this thing is completely terrible, you might do less, but uh, I'll go ahead and keep it at 70% uh, for this one. I'm also using this 1.5X drizzle. Um, and uh, what I'm sort of doing here is making the image a little bit larger in physical size here. It's basically over, it kind of basically up converts the, uh, the, the scale. And then when I do some processing later on, I'll go back and then uh, shrink it again. And it seems to come out slightly better when I do that versus keeping it at the same size the whole way. So um, it might just be sort of an optical illusion, I don't know, but it seems to perhaps help a little bit. And uh, I'll go ahead and we have to select our points here. And so what Auto Stacker what? does, which is really cool, is that it not only stacks the images, but it actually uh, takes the, the 70 um, percent uh, best images for each one of these boxes and then basically produces the best possible image within each box and then it stitches the whole series of boxes together to produce one final image so in this case here it's using uh, what looks like 28 points um, actually we'll do close to edge here too I think that typically helps the edges a little bit but uh, so now it's using 37 points and so it's going to find basically it's going to basically produce 37 small images that are the highest quality from the 70 percent of the best frames and then stitch those together to make one composite image which will you know again be a much higher quality image than what these raw images are here that you've seen um, so once you do that you can go ahead and hit the stack button and this will take several minutes um, to go through and produce all those individual images that are then stitched together and so you can kind of see uh, we'll see here at the end how long this takes but it will probably take at least a couple minutes Okay, and so now it's finished up, and again, it did take a few minutes um, to do, and one thing that uh, you should do if you're doing this is actually go through and try different combinations. So you might try um, using a lower frame percentage or a higher frame percentage and produce multiple sort of, uh, you know, final products that you can then pick the best, you know, the best one from. So uh, every time you, you run video through here, you know, the percentage that, that is the best will, will vary depending on the quality of the data coming in, you know, how the sync was and that kind of thing. And so... Um, and, and certain planets like Saturn really need more frames than other planets do typically, um, and uh, really probably more than what I have here to get a better image. But uh, basically, I'll leave it here just for this example at 70, um, and we'll kind of go from there and do the further processing. And and this is what the, the image was coming out of Auto, Auto Stacker. So you can see it's a much smoother um, uh, picture here. You can see the Cassini division quite easily, and uh, it's still pretty fuzzy because there's a lot of stacked images that are you know not maybe exactly perfectly aligned. Um, you know, there was a lot of noise in the data that was kind of smeared out, but uh, you can see it's a much better image than what it was uh, coming in. So now we can do some sharpening to really bring out more detail, and to do that we'll use Registax. And Registax can do stacking as well, but AutoStacker does a better job generally. And uh, the, the, But the big thing about Registax is it has the wavelet sharpening, which really can, can really improve your images dramatically um, from what they do, from what they initially look like coming out of AutoStacker. So we'll go ahead and uh, find that an image here that we just produced. So it was this one here. I'll bring that in here. And, uh, and this is a lot of just sort of playing around. You can basically do all these different settings for denoise. And uh, you know, it kind of, again, will vary every single time you do an image, you, you know, what the best setting is. It's not gonna be the same all the time. Um, and so I'll kind of go ahead and uh, um, just do sort of a default thing that I typically do, and that's to basically go through and do kind of like a gradually descending series of, uh, of sharpening and denoise. So I'll go through and do 0 0.6, 0 0.6, and then do 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So something like this usually works out. And you can see it actually looks worse now, but uh, once we move these sliders around, and that, that'll change quite a bit. And so usually I put this first slider somewhere right around the middle, and you can see immediately that brings out quite a bit more detail. And then this next one, I kind of just decrease them as uh, we kind of go down the row here. And so I'll just kind of gradually fade these, these down. If, if you bring these sliders up too much, it's kind of this balance of... of uh, you know, over brightening some of the, blowing out some of the details and, and maybe not showing enough. A lot of times what I'll go through here and, and do is drop the contrast down a bit and drop the brightness down a little bit. Yep, 127, I want 30. Hmm. Three, zero. There we go. 
um, to kind of help with that a little bit. Um, also, I will go ahead and flip and rotate this to kind of counteract from the telescope view there with the mirrors. And, um, and you can play around with, this, with the uh, RGB balance. Um, one, one thing there is a little bit of that, uh, from the atmospheric dispersion, there is this blue tinge on the top and, and yellow reddish uh, tinge on the bottom of the rings, and that's just from the atmospheric dispersion. But, uh, um, but you can kind of see though, you know, you can play around with some of that, with some of the RGB alignments and kind of correct a little bit of that, but I'm not gonna go through all that here, but you can play around with a lot of these different settings and improve things a little bit more from what you see here. But you can see this is dramatically better um, from what we started out with. So you can see here now, we'll go ahead and save this image first. Oh, actually what I'm gonna do here before I, uh, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, let's see, resize the image. I forgot to do that here. Again, I upconverted it uh, in the, Auto stacker. I'm going to go ahead and shrink it here to 75%. And this one, hit resize. And then we'll go ahead and save the image. And so you can see this is a much, this is not, you know, obviously the best uh, uh, picture of Saturn you've seen, but again, from a Canon SL2 with a, with a Celestron C6 and just a really quick walk through the, the image processing, I could probably do this a little bit better if I played around with the settings a little bit more, but you know, this is a much better picture and you can see it's a pretty decent, uh, uh, you know, overall image, you know, coming out of that setup. So again, this is just kind of a quick summary of how you can process your, your data using the combination of PIP, AutoStacker, and Registax. Um, and so even using a simple uh, DSLR camera, uh, a Canon SL2 is one of their very low end, uh, you know, D DSLRs as well. So um, again, not the best quality camera you could possibly use for doing uh, photography um, or do it for doing planetary photography, but you can still get some pretty nice results um, out, of, uh, out of a setup like that. So I kind of wanted to run through the process of how I do that. And uh, I'm still a beginner sort of at this process. And, and obviously I'll, I'll kind of figure things out as, you know, and, and improve things as I, as I go along. But I just wanted to share if you're getting started out yourself, an overall process that might work out pretty well for you to produce uh, some decent looking imagery out of a fairly basic uh, camera and telescope setup. So, so anyway, uh, that's all for this video and thanks for watching. Bye.